So <clears throat> let's look at the startups uh, a bit more closely. So and, and, and through the lens of, uh, of study, this is now it's already several years uh, old, but it was a significant study uh, by Kaufman Foundation uh, that calculated uh, a very long time period of over 25 years. Uh, almost all the private sector jobs were created by businesses less than five years old. So really new companies. And this is not only startups, this also includes all the new uh, small businesses and, and just generally new companies as well. So this extends broader. Uh, but at the same time, uh, during these calculated and measured years, uh, companies more than five years old destroyed more jobs than they created. All but eight of those years. So, so it's really uh, statistical perspective as well. Actually, we could uh, stop here for, for, for a second to just check if there's any questions. I think, Balto, that we can continue. All right. So, moving to another aspect of uh, the ecosystems. So, um, looking fr from the lens of the digital economy developments. So, we all, all, all uh, understand well the, the kind of general thing that is happening in the business world now with the with the innovation and startups and so forth, but let's look at also uh, more specifically another mega trend that lies on top of everything, not only of course the startup ecosystems and so forth, uh, the digital economy. <clears throat> so in this digital economy, all of the countries are competing to have the, the leading ecosystems to sustain their own economy. And it can be achieved only when all startup ecosystem organizations and roles are well networked and there is a transparency of different actors in the field. So in the digital economy we can also see that, that startups are the app developers of the society as well, not only the business and the products and services but also for the public sector. Uh, and startup ecosystems in that context can be seen as the R&D department of a city or a country. So it really, if there is no um, well-functioning startup ecosystem locally, uh, it basically means that it's like missing an R&D department in a big company. So, so it is really important to get this also um, to the right level of understanding of the importance of that for the society. So then what ends up happening if there is no homegrown innovations for own markets and to grow out from own markets to others, it also means that uh, all of the new innovations and solutions are going to be bought from other countries and other ecosystems. So it's like becoming a consumer of innov innovation at country level versus uh, uh, contributor and creator of innovation to the market as well. So it's really important from multiple different aspects for a country's economy uh, and specifically on digital context where uh, the innovation and data spreads uh, very fast and more and more uh, <clears throat> countries are becoming very aware of this uh, there's actually been a lot of recent uh, articles about this topic uh, of how that is developing. And uh, as we know from the startup world itself, for example, China has been extremely difficult market for even the Western giant technology companies to penetrate because there has been so strong protection of their digital economy uh, from the Chinese perspective. And we can all uh, look at from the perspective whether that is good or not, but it, it's clear to understand how important it is on how to look at, uh, how to position uh, 
we feel that open economy is still uh, the right way to go, and it's it's a it's a way to to expand. But at the same time, uh, it then at least requires to have a very effective own innovation uh, and startup ecosystem to not become only a consumer of innovations um, for own economy. <clears throat> so these are very, very big, big topic, but it's important that we go into uh, the startup ecosystem development with enough importance and, and understanding of the bigger pictures uh, from historical perspective, from megatrends perspective, from future progress, uh, the future forecasting perspective and what is happening in the markets today. So uh, this is the most recent uh, uh, startup ecosystem ranking uh, from, from this year by Startup Genome. Um, it's, a, it's a company that does uh, these reports. I think this is familiar for most of you. Uh, and, uh, and they measure and they do this research every year and, and they measure from multiple dimensions and every year they introduce also new dimensions to, to get more granular, granular uh, representation of different aspects of the, of the ecosystem. But at the same time this really shows that there is an ongoing competition and, and it, this typically gets a lot of attention every year when it comes out. And, uh, and, and people are really curious to see uh, uh, where, where their ecosystem is ranking in, and, and in what different dimensions to what levels. And in, in a certain way, it's also a good uh, external uh, neutral measure to, to get a pulse of own ecosystem as well. Um, and to, that also connects to, to one of the key topics for us as Startup Commons uh, about uh, the importance of data and measurability and, and, and the information. Uh, so <clears throat> when we look at ecosystems, of course, the analogy comes from, from the, the nature and so forth, but uh, the term ecosystem is really to understand that it's not a network, it's not a community, it's not an organization. Uh, it is ecosystem for the reason that analogy tries to communicate the, 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 the natural nature that it's not to be controlled by anyone. It's not something that you should own. It's not something that you, you can call your own uh, from the perspective of ownership. Uh, but it is something that is there always. So it always exists where there is activities happening uh, with innovation and startups and so forth. So it's always there. Uh, it is a type of infrastructure. When, if you can visualize it in your mind, you can see the different connections and so forth. So it really is the invisible infrastructure uh, around all of those different actors and activities that are happening. And when we look at startup, um, startup is a very complex term. It's a very vague term uh, from many aspects. And it's key also to bring clarity into the startup term itself. And uh, why startups are typically uh, hard to categorize in traditional sense <clears throat> is because they are a moving object, unlike uh, the, the other categorizations of companies. So you have small company, you have medium-sized company, you have large company, you have small business owners, solo entrepreneur, family businesses, micro companies and so forth. You can combine them with small and medium-sized companies. But their definitions really come from the old world. Uh, so again, this tale, uh, not Linear, not, not very dynamic world, but something where we expect things to move slow and things to develop slow, uh, and where the things are typically iterative innovation at best. And of course, startups are uh, is a process of innovation and growth by design. So at any given time, it is a startup 
that we can call that, but at the same time it does cross these different categories as it grows. So initially it was, it's also a micro company, at some point it is a small company, medium company, and eventually it may be a large company uh, if the progress continues. And of course the target is to be a large company either by yourself or then the innovation or the startup gets bought out and it becomes part of the large company. So as such, they are not easy, easily cats, easily measured by the traditional uh, structures that are based on the old uh, ways of measuring and, and looking at companies. It's hard to uh, look, look into any existing records and just find all of the startups uh, because of their, their nature uh, in the context of how com companies are categorized. And startups are mainly beyond iterative innovation uh, with growth focus. So they are more in the um, uh, disruptive or high growth uh, business uh, focus. And to connect also on the other end of the, 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 the growth, uh, we have the term scale-up. And scale-ups are often uh, described as, as when it's past validation and it's, you know, uh, oftentimes also combining that a, a scale-up is a startup who has grown. Um, but at the same time, uh, when we look from this field, we have the, in the, in the uh, bottom corner we have also small business and small business is of course something that we categorize that it's uh, from the previous slide as well it's more of a stale so it can be a small family business or it can be a company that has been there for for decades already and and and, and so forth uh, the dimensions here are that uh, whether there is a high growth ambition and a scalable business model or whether there is no growth ambition or there is no scalable business model. Uh, and then the other dimensions are that startups start with unvalidated business model and once they are in the scaling phase they are you know, operating with market validated business model. <clears throat> so not only is the innovation validated in the market in a form of product or service that they're clear customers and they pay for the service that is delivered. Uh, they pay for the value that the new product or service uh, uh, innovation is proving, um, but they also have a market validated business model. So meaning that not only they have a working product, but they also have a working business model to be able to capture that value and feed that back into a, a, a future growth. But the key point here is that scale-ups can actually come also from small businesses or mid-sized businesses um, uh, or even bigger companies if they are like locally big but they may be still internationally relevant uh, or mid-sized category. Uh, and typically it is something that is, is not possible really by outside force, but typically where these types of things can happen, where an existing company sudden, uh, well, suddenly or surprisingly, I would say, <clears throat> becomes a scale-up, is either through, a, if it's a family business, either through a generational change. So the next generation, uh, when they get into a ownership or decision-making role, uh, they have collected uh, um, motivations and ideas or concepts or maybe they already have something in the con uh, company but they haven't got all the resources yet to their possession to drive that forward to, to scale in. Or then the other part typically is that a company goes through a crisis, uh, almost near-death experience, uh, close to bankruptcy, uh, where they basically have nothing to lose in their existing business, but they have, if they want to survive, they have to come up with something new. Um, so 
because uh, oftentimes the companies that are doing okay and they're doing good and they are generating you know wealth they're generating money for employees for owners individuals uh, typically people don't want to risk that so so the risk pattern is not there uh, so typically there there is no high drive to to uh, innovation and oftentimes you may see companies that um, come uh, and they start you know they get into that innovation mode uh, and then you know two years later three years later they feel that oh it's now getting too risky we have invested so much and we are not getting seeing any returns uh, and then they change the ceo and then they say oh we go back to the basics we cut off these new you know ideas Yes, that we're built here and we focus on our core business and we make our core business more efficient than it ever has been and and and, and, and so forth so those are some companies go through that same cycle back and forward many times if you observe uh, over several years <clears throat> so it's but the, the main point really is that these these scale-ups can also come from uh, from these uh, existing companies, but it's it's less rare, uh, but it does happen. And uh, when we're developing a startup, um, and this is specifically from um, important from anyone working on the ecosystem side to support startups and so forth, it's really important uh, to to look at them from a balanced development perspective. Uh, and make sure that the ecosystem supports um, uh, a balanced development. Uh, so uh, the main failure factor for startups is premature scaling, which basically means that they go too far in any one dimension and forget to take care of all the other aspects of the company and then they end up getting in trouble because of uh, those other aspects not because of the part that was working really well, but because of the parts that were failing. So it may be too much money too early. Uh, it may be too many team members too early. It can be uh, too much customers too early, not enough uh, support people to support those customers. Uh, it may be too many different products too early. Uh, and not enough focus to grow with any of those products and so forth and so forth. So really looking at the, the startup development from a holistic perspective and when looking at ecosystem development, looking at ecosystem services development from a holistic perspective that it caters enough uh, for balanced startup development. <coughs> and then when we uh, look at that uh, startup growth uh, in more detail and we look at taking that innovation um, um, more closely, typical language around there is, is overly simplified around having an idea, then you launch it and then you scale. But uh, really the, the, the areas that oftentimes uh, get less attention specifically from startup ecosystem development perspective or startup support functions perspective there's not enough typically there is not enough focus on helping the startup to get a good team a balanced team and validating that there is a team there is not uh, enough focus on properly structured ideation before going into product development so really looking at uh, are the best ideas uh, already done uh, or catered before we actually go into build mode, you know, MVP mode, minimum viable product development. So is the ideation phase properly handled? And then the validation. So skipping from idea to putting product out and trying to push that to the market is a, is, a, is a wrong approach. So from idea to launch, uh, there is a whole validation of that potential innovation, uh, potential that needs to be done. So it's really important to, to not look at such simplified uh, approach, but really look at 
what are the key elements uh, behind this. <clears throat> so moving on to the ecosystem framework concept. Um, so we need to talk about the startups properly and the terminology and the topics so that we can understand what we are talking about developing uh, for. So when we're developing the ecosystem, startup ecosystem, we are looking to develop that ecosystem, of course, for the startups and to support that startup development. So moving to the ecosystem uh, framework concept. So the foundational piece, and uh, we have uh, what we covered so far about startups in about uh, uh, less than an hour. Um, we have uh, a separate growth academy, um, uh, e-learning 26 hours about the whole startup development phases journey uh, on top of uh, this development phases uh, framework uh, where we go deep into each of what happens in formation phase, what happens in validation phase, what happens in growth phase from all the different various aspects and we connect all the key knowledge that the actual uh, team members, the talent, the entrepreneurs and those business angels and so forth who take part in the actual ongoing development or longer term journey with the startups instead of providing specific short term service in their path uh, and we cover uh, all of the key topics in a structured way with that content. So we now had a very quick summary of those topics, uh, but this uh, narrows down to the startup development framework that we have created to get this one page visualization of all of the key activities and terminologies and idea, uh, identifying factors, uh, how to know uh, what development phase the company is. And the first way to use this is to then also look at, for example, if we provide specific support service or if we'll need to try to get startups from certain development phase to another, where, do we should, where should we look at that and what do we have in ecosystem that caters for, for that. Uh, the reason why startup development phases starts from minus two and not from the zero is that the, the point of zero is uh, where we can, it's not necessarily where companies form, it's where the team commits to execute, so typically a shareholder agreement uh, where, where it's structured, the, the model of how the entity should look like, how the ownership should look like and so forth, um, and then the company may be registered later, uh, or it may be the point where the company is registered. Um, but the point is that there's many things that happen prior to that that are part of the, the, the overall startup development journey that needs to be understood. And therefore also in the ecosystem, the support function should be uh, available. <clears throat> and uh, if we just compare also the difference between an innovation and a startup, uh, innovation itself, as we have discussed about this, innovation is about providing a new value generating product, service, or business model to valid, uh, validated markets. So now when we have validated innovation, we provide that to the market. So this innovation, of course, can be any format. It can be product, it can be service, it can be a tool of some kind or, or a process and so forth. So it itself is not attached to anything. But startups, they do both the innovation part to real business. So once they have validated that innovation, the product they have created that is, is validated, they actually deliver uh, that as a business to markets. But they, at the same time, they also develop a new growing organization. <clears throat> and the latter part here is something that is often uh, uh, doesn't get as much attention. People are, uh, and uh, support functions and the various different aspects are focused on the innovation and the business side. And oftentimes 
neglecting and, and not focusing on how does the company, uh, how does the startup develop the capabilities to actually grow into markets. It's not as easy as just let's hire people and they automatically know what to do and how that works. Uh, so startups have to do both of these things. And when we look at through the lens of startup development phases, there's two clear areas. And, and we talked about the balance, uh, the premature scaling and how to keep things in balance. This is the minimum level of how to look balance uh, of startup development. So on one hand, they developed the business idea or just the product idea in the beginning um, into a service product and ultimately a business. And then on the other hand, they take from talent, they build a co-founding team, and then they have to build a scaling organization. And these are the two different dimensions um, that, that needs to go hand in hand in balance. If these are offset uh, or, or not, there's not enough support on the other side, it, it creates a, a, a big problem uh, potentially in the, in the future. So if either side gets too far too fast, uh, that increases the likelihood of the failure of the company. So <clears throat> majority of innovation services and knowledge uh, share typically focus on the innovation and market, yet all investors and statistics say team is key, but where is the team support uh, how much there is support for team building, for co-founder, commitment building, shareholder agreement building, uh, recruiting, uh, process development for scaling organization and so forth. So it really is, is a significant, uh, typically missing part. So a great team can make success out of average idea while average team can fail even a great idea. So these are the common kind of uh, phrases uh, used to highlight the importance of the team side. Focus on team uh, setup, improving team building support activities and measuring the team ability to execute in addition to innovation. So, so really paying more attention to those who actually create the innovation, push the innovation, validate the innovation and scale the innovation in addition to just looking at the innovation itself. So, and the key really is to important uh, to develop this in sync and in balance. 